the other dimension of this is that we should be able to call things out, things that are not prophecy. And I believe uh, uh, Alote led us into some situations that we, we, we called it out clearly, that this can't be called prophecy. At best, it may be word of knowledge. And uh, for today, I'm, I'm excited in my spirit because we're going to help believers be able to separate divination pro from prophecy. A lot of the things called prophecy that we see on Facebook, that people share, that people are excited about, I believe is divination. It is not prophetic in its nature. And by the time we're done with uh, today's discussion, I believe God will give you the grace, me the grace to be able to help other believers to navigate their way around uh, the prophetic calling. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think to lay some foundations on this, we must understand some definitions on what is either div divination uh, and sorcery. And I know we talked about prophecy, but just to throw what it means. So what is sorcery or divination? Thank you very much. So uh, sorcery or divination has to do with seeking out spirits. So it is more of someone seeking out to hear from spirit, someone seeking out to hear from the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So it may sound benign, but it is not. The, we define prophecy as a message from God. So God has sent out a message through an individual to you. It may be confirming something you've been told to do. It may be giving you comfort in a particular situation. It may be encouraging you. It may be revealing Christ. And we did talk about the fact that at the end of the day, any prophetic encounter must reveal Jesus. It must give us a better encounter experience with Jesus. So on the other hand, divination is basically seeking to hear from spirits. So I don't, that the, 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 the whole goal is that I want to hear from spirit. Whatever the spirit may be is what I will leave blank for now. Because as we go along and analyze a lot of the so-called ministration of prophets, you realize that they are basically doing divination. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. So it is seeking out spirits uh, other than the spirit of God. Now, the, now... <laughs> I know that is, so basically it's just seeking spirits outside the spirit of God. So um, I think some of us may, may, may not know that outside God, there could be other spirits that we are prayed by. Um, and we could be a little bit naive about these kinds of stuff. So when we are talking, uh, when we are talking about spirits, uh, before we bring in the scriptures, um, we want to understand, because uh, uh, from our background, uh, it's predominantly an African background, uh, there are certain things, uh, certain cultures, certain practices that um, involve these kinds of other spirits. So we want to kind of understand, because I've heard the saying that these are not bad. They existed before we even heard Jesus Christ. Uh, some of the practices that we do, the libation, all these other things that we do, it may not be, but it says that to who are you pouring these things to? And they are this, it's like, hey, we've been practicing this. We've been protected by these spirits, the God of the land, the sea and all. So if you can please give us a little bit understanding of these spirits, and then we talk about where the point of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm happy with the angle you, you coming from for this topic. Mm -hmm. So we have to all understand that we are all spiritual beings. So mm -hmm. there is a human spirit, the spirit that dwells in you. Mm -hmm. So for the unbeliever, for someone who does not know Jesus, mm -hmm. who has not encountered Jesus, they still have a spirit, but their spirit is dead. Dead in the sense that their spirit does not have connection to God, who is the father of all spirits. Mm -hmm. So... A human being by himself 
has a spirit, that's a human spirit. And the hum, your spirit interacting with your body forms your soul. Mm -hmm. So the real you is a, your spirit, the spirit that lives in you. And it finds its expression through your body in your emotion, your intellect, your will, your decisions, and your thoughts. So all these components are expression of the spirit that lives in you. So your body is, 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 is more or less a container. Mm -hmm. So every human being has a spirit. And that is why there is a yearning for the human soul to connect to someone outside itself. Mm -hmm. And for us, the right channel is through Jesus Christ to be connected to the Father. Okay. So that is you as a human being. And that is why we, when we talk about divination, why is someone seeking out spirit? Because your spirit wants to be connected, wants to have the exposure into the spiritual dimension or spiritual world. On the other hand, when the devil rebelled against God and was cast down, he did not come alone. He came with all the host of angels that followed him that believed in him. And these hosts are now scattered everywhere. So before human beings came on earth, the atmosphere, the earth, the sea, the mountains, the trees, the forest, the environment, the entire universe is scattered with spirits because they've been thrown out of their home. They are homeless. They've been thrown out of where they reside because they rebelled with the devil, with, with Lucifer against God and Michael. And many times Christians make it sound as if God fought the devil. God is too big, too great to fight the devil. I, I hope we don't even put the devil in the same equation as God. God is too big, too great, too wise, too almighty to even contend with the devil. It was Michael who kicked the devil and says, no, 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 no. You are out of order, out of this place. So Michael fought him and kicked him out. So when you're talking about God, you don't put God and the devil in the same equation. Never make that mistake. God and the devil can't feel the same sentence. The devil is not God's enemy. <laughs> he, he doesn't have what it takes to be the enemy to God. So he, he, so the universe is now with spiritual entities who over the ages have been around, who over the ages have been seeking to still do the bidding and following the instructions of the devil. So that is why spirits have been scattered. In addition, we have to also understand that angels are also scattered all abroad. Angels are scattered all abroad. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was now poured on the earth. So I'm, I'm, I'm labeling various spiritual entities hosting the universe. So we have demonic entities, the devil, Lucifer, and his host cast out. We have angels who can go to heaven, but because of their assignments, because of their duties, they also move on earth, move through the universe. Number three, and we have the spirit of God poured out on earth. So you have demonic entities, dark spirits, who don't have the mindset, the agenda that God is executing on earth. Number two, we have angelic beings, and number three, we have the Holy Spirit. So any entity, any individual, a human being, a human spirit can seek these spiritual beings, spiritual entities. And that is what we say when your goal is to seek our spirit, then you enter into the realm and the domain of sorcery and divination. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the, the distinction and the elaboration on the different spirits that we have, even currently, until Jesus come 
uh, to the rest of the ages. So now the discussion of today is the difference between divination or sorceries and prophecy. And earlier on, we established that with prophecy, it goes ahead to show Christ, reveal Christ in it. So we want to ask uh, about this definition. Yes, they are seeking other spirits and and what is the purpose what is the goal where is it going what is what is the benefit of this divinitions thank you so thank you and you, you I'm, I'm excited with this question because if we even leave it at people going then why will people do divination because one through divination because these spirits are around everywhere you can have access to information that people don't know. So if you meet someone and they tell you about your family, you're from here, this happened in your family. It does not necessarily mean the information they are telling you is from the Holy Spirit. They can be accessing that information from a familiar spirit, a demonic spirit, because this information is available if you meet someone and the fact that they're able to tell you your bank account number, it does not mean they are accessing the information from the Holy Spirit. So these div div diviners or divination gives people access to information that they don't have. There is a story I want to use in scriptures that one I want to use to illustrate this. When you go to 1 Samuel chapter 28, 1 Samuel chapter 28, and verse 13 downwards, what happened was that Saul, who has basically lived in disobedience to God, was going to fight the Philistines. And he saw their army and he was so afraid, he was so worried. And he wanted to seek out information from God. So he prayed. He called his prophet. And God did not speak to him because he was living in disobedience. Then he asked one of the seven, is there any medium that I can consult so that the information I am seeking for, I can get? So they said, there is, there is this witch medium of Endor. Let's go there. So he went there with his seven. And when they got there, the medium, he, he had to dis, disguise himself because when Saul started as a king, he, took, he made them kill all the medium, all of them, the, the people who were practicing medium, who were practicing divination, killed them because he wanted to follow the, the laws of God. And now he's seeking out because he wants information that naturally he can't get. So the, the, the woman asked him, who do you want me to call? He says, I call the spirit of someone. So the woman started her enchantment and the Bible says that she started screaming and says, I see spirits coming. And the spirit formed into an old man and the old man spoke to her for, for Saul. So that is what diviners do. They are seeking for information. They are seeking for something that it will, they need to work to the advantage, therefore, they are seeking from spiritual entities. And in, I know believers, is it the spirit of someone? It can never be the spirit of someone. Because the Bible never said, I saw a spirit come. It says, I saw spirits coming. And they conform together to form an image. So mm -hmm. that is a distinction. Someone has only one spirit. So if you truly call it the spirit of someone, you should call one spirit. You don't call spirit which will come and now mix together to form an image for you. So it, it can never be the spirit of someone, but it has everything to do with seeking out information from spirit. And that is what diviners do. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. And um, so they are seeking for information that they do not have. And, and that is something that we've just said. So the question here is, I'm, I'm trying to understand the magnitude, the, the magnitude of operating in, in, in that such of a spirit and also the effects of it. 
so if we, if we can dive dive uh, into it because someone someone may not understand if i'm seeking for information i don't have isn't that a good thing <laughs> so <laughs> good so it, the yeah. whole point is not the information it's who you're seeking it from mm. so the issue here is that someone can parade himself as a prophet to you mm -hmm. but he's not hearing from god Mm -hmm. He's hearing from other spirits. Wow. So the issue and the challenge here is not the information they're telling you. It is the source of the information mm. and the effect that it has. So when genuinely God speaks to you, the effects are different. And when you hear from a spirit, dark spirit, mm -hmm. a contrary spirit, the effects are different. Mm -hmm. So it is... It is not the information that matters. Mm -hmm. It is what that information is going to, first, the source of the information mm -hmm. and to what is going, what, what happens to the people who mm -hmm. follow diviners. Mm -hmm. And in our days, there are people in the church called prophets and they are simply sorcerers. They are diviners. Mm -hmm. They are not connected to the spirit of God. They don't carry messages from God. Rather, they seek out spirits. Mm -hmm. They seek out, so the things you're saying, it's things they've sought from spiritual entities who are alien to Christ, who are alien to the things of God. And that makes it dangerous. And even, I want us to read some scriptures. God particularly, God particularly warned the children of Israel when they were entering into the promised land to watch against mediums and diviners. We can go to Leviticus chapter 19, 26 and 31. Le Leviticus chapter 19, 26 and 31. And that will show what God's mindset with regards to these things. Okay. So Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26 to 31. And I'm 20, just 26 and 31, please. Oh, 26 and 31. And I'm reading from the New King James 26. For you shall not eat anything with the blood, nor shall you practice divination or sooth saying and then 31 give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits do not seek after them to 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 be defiled by them i am the lord your god amen so god is telling us right that anybody who seeks out mediums anybody who attaches themselves to mediums be it having the name prophet or whatever they will end up being defiled. Mm. They will end up being defiled. They will end up being on the wrong path of life and the effects are deadly. Mm. Wow. 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 I will ask this question, Pastor, because uh, two days, yesterday or two days ago, I, I witnessed uh, administration of prophecy and, and this man of God, was making the statement of the angels revealing. So I guess he works with angels. So it, uh, instead of God revealing, um, we've, we've talked about the three different spirits that are on this. Would you consider uh, angels as, as the spirits of angels? Or I've not seen an angel yet, physical angels yet, but we are seeking that with operating under an angel and an angel um uh, would that be considered as divination so what i would do is uh let's go through what's the difference between prophecy and divination and at the end it may answer this question okay i, I want I, I want to i'm very happy with your question mm -hmm. but i just want to give a yes or no answer because if we go through the various comparison, at the end, people can come to that decision. Mm -hmm. okay. And when someone is using angel, you can watch the whole administration and be like, no, you're, 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 you're divining. You, you're not speaking out of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So if, if that is okay with you, oh, Pastor, the that's right. yet, I know someone will be like, but he said as an angel. And you've already said that angels are around. Yes. So he said and they are from angel. God, some are for, with the devil. Uh -huh. So, so uh, if I leave it with that answer, it will leave people conflict as that. But you've already talked about angels. 
So why can't he see angels and talk about angels? Okay. But it, it is a total package of what the person is doing. Okay. Okay. So the first, the first, the first boundary or the first boundary between prophecy and divination is one. Even though both are seeking out information, mm -hmm. prophecy liberates. Mm -hmm. There is liberation of your soul, liberation of your spirit, liberation of your mind. And divination put an individual in bondage. Mm -hmm. So even though you receive messages, prophetic messages bring deliverance, bring liberation. Divine is rather put people in bondage. So when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says that wherever the spirit of God is, there is what? There is liberty. So when you see prophetic ministration, what it does is that at the end of the day, when the message is delivered coming from God, mm -hmm. it sets people free. Mm -hmm. But when diviners start speaking, they put people in bondage. You can't do this. You can't cross this road. You can't wear this because the whole operation is a spirit that limits and that puts people in bondage. Mm -hmm. So that is the first distinction. When prophetic messages are coming, it brings liberation. The spirit of God brings liberty, but divine spirit, dark spirit, rather will put people in bondage. There are people who bought cars, they can't drive their cars. <laughs> because they heard from a diviner. There are people who can get out of their house certain days because they heard from a diviner. So divination puts people in bondages. Mm. Number two, and for me, that is a critical difference for me. Anytime I see someone ministering in the prophetic, if I'm not able to descend your spirit, this is what I look out for to know whether you are using divine, divine, divination or you are a true prophet of God. True prophecy emphasizes Christ's power over all. True prophetic messages, the emphasis is the victory of Christ over all things. Mm -hmm. When a true prophet is speaking, they exalt the authority of Christ. Mm -hmm they make you know and see that all power in heaven, all power on earth, all power under the earth has been given to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus holds the key to death. He holds the key to Hades. Mm -hmm. That is when a prophetic message is coming from God. Mm -hmm. But when a divine spirit is speaking, they emphasize the powers of the dark world. So when someone is div going through divination or they're speaking out of divination, because all that they see is dark spirit, their statement is as if they are spokesperson of witches. They are spokesperson of evil spirit because they are divine. And those are the spirit they are hearing from. Mm -hmm. So if a prophet is speaking, the prophet is speaking from Christ and of Christ. And that man emphasizes Christ, mm -hmm. the power of Christ. When a diviner is speaking, when a medium is speaking, whether he calls himself prophet, pastor, or whatever, if they are a medium for, for evil spirit, they speak of them. So those are the people when immediately start speaking, I see a witch. The witch has flown from here. The witch is doing this. Ah, the witch wants to do this. Why? He's divining. He, he, is, he is becoming a medium of expression for those spirits. If I am speaking of, 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 if I'm a prophet of Christ, I'm a mouthpiece of him. So that is where I draw my line. Hmm. When someone is prophesying and all they're seeing are witches, all they're seeing is evil spirit, all they're seeing is what the demons want to do. I write, I will note that you're speaking for them. You're not speaking for Christ. Hmm. And believers must wake up. Believers must wake up to this truth. If you are a spokesperson for God, you speak of what God is doing. And if you are a spokesperson for evil spirit, which is, then they are the spirit you hear from. Hmm. And we must be bold to call them out. 
If all your prophets, so-called prophecies, is what witches are doing, is what the demons met, where they met, what they are saying, you're, you're their spokesperson, basically. That's and a... that, that is a difference between a true prophet. So go through scripture from Genesis to Revelation and tell me any prophet of God that spoke of meetings of witches, meetings of demons, where meet the demons have met, what they're saying and what they're going to do. Give me an example. What they would do, what a true prophet does, he tells you that yes, the enemy has planned this. Then right away goes to speak of what God is saying about that situation. Mm. What God is going to do about that situation. What God has done about that situation. Mm. So I'm not saying we don't see what the enemy has planned, but we are not their spokesperson. Mm. There are some prophets, so-called prophets, when you listen to their ministration, it's like, wow, you've spent 30 minutes talking about demons. What is God saying about this? So a prophet speaks of God's mind to a situation. A diviner, a medium, a sorcerer speaks of what the enemy, what the dark spirit is about to do. And that will help you distinguish between a true prophet and sorcerers in the church. Mm, okay, thank you so much. And to, to, gain, to gain more understanding um, where someone is prophesying or speaking and uh, it seems like what is coming is dealing with like uh, the example we just uh, expressed, um, they're talking about the devil, they have planned, they have met. Um, are we saying that as long as after what they have said, because we've heard some that they literally, that's all they do. And then they said, in the name of Jesus, you are cast out, you know? So I just wanted to bring a little bit of understanding and then we can move forward because uh, there's so many sp specification to, uh, and if, 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 if questions that can, can be going this, but just for this clarity, because some ministrations, all we've heard is the devil is this from your mother's side, from your father's side, from your ancestors, from this. And, but today, in the name of Jesus, we cast it out. I've, we've heard such a, a comment. So I believe when a reference back to Jesus, that does that classify as prophecy? No. <laughs> no but the truth is that the sons of Sceva were not believers. Mm. They were even actually even casting out devils with the name of Jesus. Mm. So like another demon taught them a lesson in that. So the fact that someone added the name Jesus at the end of a statement does not mean, does not mean they are true prophet. Mm. So the goal, as, as we've been saying, diviners will hear from evil spirit. So if you, your whole ministration is what evil spirit are saying, you're divining. What's, how, how is it that you're a prophet of God by your whole utterances is what evil spirit are saying? It doesn't mean you're that powerful. It, it just shows us who you're hearing from. Mm. And divination means you're hearing from dark spirit mm. other than the spirit of God. And prophecy means that you're speaking from the spirit of God. So if everything you're telling me is what witches are saying, what demons are saying, what the principalities are saying, mm. then you're divining. That, that is a source of your information. Mm. And some people are wise. They'll say an angel, an angel. But what is the angel saying? They've taken your womb. Which angel takes womb and hang it somewhere? Mm -hmm. So don't let people deceive you. Mm -hmm. Don't And right, I, 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 we put out the first distinction. When true prophetic messages come, it brings liberation. Even if, if, even if it's rebuking you, even if it's scary, at the end, you are liberated. Mm -hmm. But when divination comes, it may even sound good, but at the end, it puts you in bondage. Mm. It puts you in, in a cocoon of fear. You can't do this. You can't go here. Oh, because this witch is, is on this point. The, no, no, it's divination. And number two, if the ministration of the individual is all what witches are doing, what they've said, he's not hearing from God. Mm. He may say the spirit of God is telling me, that the witches in your village met, they said this. No, 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 no. That's not the spirit of God speaking. 
the spirit of God will tell you what God has done, what God is doing. Mm. Wow. So it's a, it's a great distinction. And I'll be bold to say a lot of the so-called prophets are sorcerers and they are diviners, mm. especially on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> especially, sometimes you're listening to them, you're like, ha, ha, this is clear sorcery. Mm. It's clear sorcery mm. because there is no template in scripture of this kind of ministration other than mediums, other than the prophets of Baal. Mm. There's no template of what they are doing nowadays. Mm. Wow. Everything you see, which is one to kill people, which is one to kill people. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what has God got to say with regards to that? Mm. So if they are talking from about what witches are doing, they are their spokesperson and they are sorcerers. And we must be bold and call it so. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much for, for that. And I don't know if you have uh, more examples to, to give. Yeah, I have two points to okay. distinguish between the two. All so right. the other point is that true prophecy points you to God's love and acceptance in Christ. And so when a true prophet is talking, even if things are not going right, even if the witches in your village have met and planned, and God reveals it, a true prophetic message will point you to God's love for you, God's acceptance of you, and God being with you. And when a medium or a sorcerer is speaking, rather they will hold your attention away from God's love, God's attention, and God being with you. So does it matter if God is with me and all the witches in Hawaii meet to talk about me? Does it matter? Yeah. It doesn't. So a true prophet will point your attention to the fact that God is with you. But a sorcerer, because they are divining and hearing from the dark world, will rather point your attention away from the fact that God is with you. Mm. And that is a clear difference in the ministration you see. If it's of a true prophet, you realize that they are always referencing to the power of God. They are referencing to God being with you. But if, if they are sorcerers, rather they are pointing you away from the fact that God is with you. The mm. Bible says that if God be with us, who can be against us? If God be with us, if God is with us, if God is on my side, who can be against me? So why will I give attention to a so-called prophet whose whole goal is to magnify the enemies and the people planning against me? They are not speaking of God. They are not speaking for God. And don't be deceived by that caveat they end. Okay, come and let me help you. <laughs> come and let me help you. Come and let me deal with it. <laughs> so after all that Christ has done, after all that Christ has done, I need you, a mere mortal, to deal with it for me. Mm. Anytime people start speaking like this, no, 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 that their source is not the genuine spirit of God. Wow. And the last one, yes, please. which is also so, for me, the two things, if I can't descend your spirit, the two things I use, are they emphasizing Christ or are they emphasizing the enemy. Number two, the second criteria I use to differentiate between true prophecy and sorcery is what medium of contact are they talking about? A true prophet has only one medium to work in. It is the Holy Spirit. Mm. A true prophet can only work through the Holy Spirit. But a sorcerer, a diviner, work through objects. So they can ask for, they work through handkerchiefs, they work through oil, they work through going to grave sites, they work through certain particular things because they must divine through those things. Mm -hmm. So if someone is into the prophetic ministration and their emphasis is not the Holy Spirit, their emphasis is not the Holy Spirit, but their emphasis is the kind of oil you bought. 
the kind of water they want you to have, the yes. kind of handkerchief you must bring, the color of handkerchief you must have, know for sure that they are diviners. Sure. I remember I encountered this brother and he was telling me that he encountered this prophet. And I asked him, <laughs> what, what happened? He says he, was, he really need, needed a solution to a problem. And the prophet told him that the only way they can be helped is that he has to drink his father's urine. Hmm. So they called his father, his father urinated and he drank it. And, and, and yeah, this is, not, this is not Ghana, this is Africa, this is America. Yeah, and I looked at him and said, you're possessed. And you were surprised, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, no, you're possessed. You, you've been tied to something you shouldn't be tied to. Mm. And by the grace of God, we prayed that he was delivered. But what I'm trying to say, this is a diviner. Mm. It, their object is not the Holy Spirit. Their medium of operation is not the Holy Spirit. If you go to any man of God, I don't care what church he is in. I don't care what ministration he calls it. Mm. And they are using any channel, being it your pound. Someone say, take your ring and give me your ring. And they will base off your ring to prophesy. They are using divination. If mm. someone needs to see your palm before they can prophesy, they are using divination. If someone needs intimate clothing, bring your singlet, bring your shirt before I can prophesy, they are using divination. The only medium a true prophet operates from is the medium of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Immediately you step outside this medium, you're using divination. And truth be told, we are in a very spiritual world, so people can divine with things that are connected to you. It does not make them a prophet. Mm. It does not make them a prophet. We've used that term loosely, but I pray to God that today we will be able to call the distinction and know that these are sorcerers, these are diviners, and they are never prophets of the Most High God. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor, for this. Uh, to our audience, we say thank you so much for uh, staying with us till this day, Sister Efia Cash, and also Isaac, uh, uh, Elder Isaac Dumpre. Say so God bless you, Pastor, for this revelation. We also have the King Abba Bill uh, with their comment. He says, yes, God never fought with the devil. Michael kicked the devil out of heaven back by the power of God when he needed assistance. God bless you. Um, and also please share this li uh, live, live uh, stream and we know that people will be blessed by it. So Pastor, the question here is uh, obvious. I was going to ask uh, the reading of the palm where you were able to introduce it because we live in a time and generation um, that given of the ring, given of an intimate attire seem as though we are getting an information. Um, from an, an information from that source, from that definition. However, we, we don't think of, does this also, also affect us? Like we talked about, you know, you are tied to uh, the example you gave, drinking the father's urine, that you are tied to, to, to something that you are not supposed to. Um, what can these definitions lead uh, some, sometimes for us Christians who are, uh, don't really care much about the palm reading, the psych reading, um, you know, the reading of, hey, raising, talking to the dead as a source of uh, uh, information. Thank you. So one, exactly what God said in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26 and 31 says, it will defile you. It defiles your spirit. Mm -hmm. So anytime someone goes to a diviner, they don't live justified. They don't live free. They live defiled. They live uh, with, 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 a, with a stain. And the most dangerous part, which is my, with my little experience, is that people open avenues of their lives for demonic operation. So anytime you attach yourself or you open yourself up, to these so-called prophets who are rather sorcerers, and you go to palm readers and you go to these media mediums uh, to talk to a dead person, what you've actually done is that you have willingly opened your life 
for a demon, a demon, a principality, and a spiritual entity, a wicked spirit, to have an entrance into your life. And mm. I'll be honest, those people never have free, are never free afterwards. Mm. They are never free afterwards till they are prayed for. And that's why I told that brother, you, you, we, we have to cast this out. We have to break this, this connection because it is not of God. Wow. So the danger is that it defiles you. Number two, it leads you to, to a life with demonic influence. And number three, you live in bondage. Now, any challenge you meet. So that is a problem people have. Because when you now put hearing from God into an angel, into a dead person, how can the Holy Spirit speak to you? Mm. How can you grow in the Lord? So the whole focus of these sorcerers, that's why they are, they are, their numbers keep increasing. Because they keep turning people's attention from God to things. And once your attention is on, oh, I need to hear about this. I need to hear concerning what this person is doing. Before mm. you realize you're far away from fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And your faith, your faith, your faith mm. is either shaky, your faith is weak, and eventually you can lose your faith. But the, 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 the danger is that people, when they go to these medium, palm readers, mm -hmm. astrologers, what happens to them is that they live in bondage. They live under condemnation and demo demons and wicked spirit are able to penetrate and control their lives. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for this. Um, Pastor, just uh, for, for, um, just for liberation, for liberation. Um, I felt like maybe someone may, could be listening to us now who may have already participated in this activity. Uh, of, uh, one of the solutions you, provide, you said was to pray. Um, uh, pray to what extent, fast to what extent to know that you are liberated from this, uh, just to give a solution or hope to someone here, here in us right now. So, so if you've been to any of these palm readers, medium, mm -hmm. and all, you are tied to this so-called prophet but who are sorcerers in the church, mm -hmm. and you've been having these weird dreams, weird connections, you know your spirit is not settled within you. You are you, you know. It's not just you praying. You must seek help. Mm. Go to your pastor. Go to your presiding elder. Go to someone who you can attest that they speak the word of God in truth. And let them help you in prayer. Help you to cross over. Because a lot of these, a lot of these connections become they eventually become strongholds in your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying unless someone pray for you, but you must pray, but you need help outside yourself, especially in breaking some of these strongholds that mm -hmm. you open yourself because you went to a palm reader, because you went to a medium, because you went and they called on dead spirits to talk to you. Uh, you open a door of your life to these things. And it's not all is not lost. That's why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. what Christ has done, Christ has dealt with, he says that he, he made a public display of them. There is no demon. There is no spirit that can nullify what Christ has done for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, they commit. If you want to know what witches have said about you, it's not good. I don't need anybody to tell me that witches don't like me. I don't need anybody to tell me that principalities don't want me to succeed. But what matters is that I know because Christ died for me. Mm -hmm. I know because of the blood, because of my testimony of faith in Jesus Christ, I have overcome them. Mm -hmm. So that is what we teach. And that is what we must stand with. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to be, live in fear because a medium, a sorcerer, just started speaking negativity and what those spirits are saying through him. Wow. Thank you so much for providing that solution. I'll leave the platform if you have anything you want to uh, introduce as we try to bring this uh, discussion to a close, please. Thank you very much. So what I want to tell everyone is that we must watch out. When you read 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says that my beloved, test 
every spirit and see if they are from God. We don't just surrender. The fact that this person appeared on Facebook does not mean they are genuine. You test the spirit. And some of the tests is what we've gone through. The things to look out for. Test every spirit and see if they are of God. Next week, our emphasis will be how to grow uh, uh, your prophetic giftings. Because the Bible says that every Christian can prophesy how to be in tune. So more or less, we'll, we'll, we'll be concluding, but we'll raise the element of false prophets and we'll raise the element of you as a believer. How do you know when you're prophesying and how can you grow in that? Mm -hmm. And I believe that God will bless us and God will equip us for victorious Christian living. Wow. Uh, God bless you, Pastor, and also to our viewers uh, for staying with us on this today's pulpit discussion. The topic was the difference between divination and prophecy. And I believe that we've gained understanding as we've talked about prophecy reveals the love of God. It leads someone to the acceptance of Christ Jesus. You know, and we also talked about the medium of a true prophecy is through the spirit of the living God. And we also talked about, um, you know, anyone that practice sorceries, divinations, uh, it, it, it def they defile themselves, they leave people in bondages, and also their faith are shaken, you know, so all these uh, uh, shows the differences of divination or sorceries and prophecy and I, we say that god richly richly bless you pastor for for this explanation and i know that now many of us christians are vigilant and on, on an eye uh, so pastor when you encounter when you're in a church service let's bring some sense of humor here so when we have if we when we are in church service and uh, you meet a prophet or someone you know in the, in our in our in our <laughs> in our setting sometimes during worship you have people rising up speaking and saying that it's called prophecy and all that stuff um uh, how do you deal with such do you call them out do you be like hey be careful my sister my brother and like how do you deal with it or you do you just completely ignore it maybe from the perspective of leadership and also from the perspective of members thank you so one of the things I, I do by the grace of God is that everywhere I go, when I see a problem, I teach on it. So I think I've been to two districts. I spent time talking about operation of the prophetic gifting. And afterwards, a lot of these things stop. <laughs> After the teaching. So sometimes it's ignorance. People don't know. Sometimes people speak out of the human spirit. They see a problem and their human spirit wants it to be resolved. And they, they are not able to distinguish between their human spirit speaking and they are not able to distinguish between the spirit of God speaking through them. And not all prophecy needs to be announced in church. There are some you must deal with it. There are some you tell leadership they deal with it. And there are some you let the whole church know. So once you teach these things, a lot of these uh misunderstanding and ignorance is taken care of but we don't rush into condemning people and making people feel they are lost but for sorcery i will attack it head on i don't leave room for mediums and sorcery you cannot be saying your professor you see you see you see dead bodies dead people and they are talking to you and they are te you're telling us what this no will stop you <laughs> we only hear the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we don't but we need out. to pray, even when they are, but we need to pray for God's intervention. I guess now we are about to pray for God to act on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, are, there, there are ways to go about it. You can, and uh, the, you, you can raise a song. You can step in and change the prayer topic. You can quiet people and use that as a learning moment to draw people's attention to what Christ has done and what christ is going to do i, I remember somewhere uh, and someone came and said oh i won't give any this this church there is a demon sitting on the church and we have to pray about that <laughs> and i looked at him i said i looked at him i said sir 
me in this church, there can never be a demon sitting here. <laughs> I said, I'm not, I'm telling you, there can never be a demon sitting on top of a church I mean. <laughs> and he was surprised. No, no, I said, it can't be. It can never, ever be. And I told him, you shouldn't worry. He will see right. As time goes on, he will see clearly. And, and he had, so there are things you hear, you don't panic. You don't panic. You don't let fear ride on you. How can the body of Christ has a, a demon sitting on top of it? We've built and we've heard from demons. And now we translate into to the church. It is not true. And where do they get these doctrines from? A lot of times when demons are coming up, people engage them in conversation. They send it. And whatever they are saying, they take them as gospel truth. And they keep repeating it. So... If a demon is coming out and says, oh, I was sitting on top of the church. Remember, demons are lying spirit. The devil is the father of all lies. When a demon speaks, they lie. When a demon speaks, they are lying. The truth is the word of God. I remember, uh, this, is, this is public knowledge, not that I was there. It's on, it's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. You can Google it and watch it. Uh, there was a demon manifestation in... Uh, uh, Bishop Oye did push church, and the demon was screaming, I killed Jesus, I killed Jesus. We met and killed Jesus. <laughs> and you can have gullible believers leave, watch this video, and start teaching these things that demons met and killed Jesus spiritually before they killed him physically. Does this make sense? He came to die. He came knowing that I'm going to die. How can demons kill him? <laughs> so... People build this doctrine because they've been listening to doctrines and teachings of demons. And we must be bold and not live in fear of them. There are things you, you can't, no demon can tie me anywhere. It's, it's simply impossible. It is simply impossible for a demon to tie me. It, it can't happen. When I have been crucified with Christ, yet, I live not I, but Christ lives in me. How can this be possible? Mm. Even the devil can tie me. Because the life I live, Christ lives through me. That is my truth. I don't need a demon. You can't, how can you put me in a bottle? It's not possible. How can you be the reason I feel? I can't. But we've bought their doctrines. And you have gullible Christians who keep repeating it. Oh, this church. It, 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 no, 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 no. A demon can't sit on our church. It's not possible. Wow. It's not possible. Christ reigns. Christ leads. And his word is final. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. And the irony of sometimes these people, uh, some so-called prophets and men of God saying that, there is this strong spirit in this environment or in this church. And I'm like, if you are here, why is the devil still, why is it, why are these spirits still here? You know, if you call yourself a man of God, you are filled with the spirit of God. The reason why things are not happening is because of a strong spiritual being. And then you being here, what, what, to be the what, solution. what are you doing? Yeah. You brought Christ and, and, the painful truth is that that is why when we read the Bible, we, we, the Bible is our standard. So if my church is struggling to grow, I go to scriptures. What does the Bible say about church growth? And what the Bible says is what I come and do. If there are issues, if people are fighting in the church, I go to scripture. What does the Bible say? Division, cast out division. We, we, we've been so devil conscious that we are not leaving what the word says. And we go and listen to these stories and now we build theories on it. If there is a lot of fighting in your church, don't go and blame a demon right off. Are you, are you creating an atmosphere of love? Are you creating an atmosphere of forgiveness? Are you there for one another? If you're not doing this basic, Jesus says, love yourself that the world will know you are my disciples. That is the reason your church is not growing because you fight, you're fighting. A house divided against itself cannot stand. 
So we now, I'm, I'm very spiritual, so I'm not saying we over spiritualize, but when we even spiritualize things, we get it wrong. We rather go and believe the testimony of the, the, the evidence of the enemy rather than spiritualizing and saying, oh, God is here. We are the body of Christ. We will stand. Rather, we switch to the negative and start operating with that narrative. Yes, there are demons everywhere, but that's why Christ came and says that for this reason, the son of man came, that he would destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil in my life, they've been destroyed. I don't need a prophet to come and destroy. That is why Jesus came, that the works of the devil in my life will be destroyed. I don't need a prophet to destroy it. Mm. And excuse my language, you don't even need a pastor to destroy it. Mm. It doesn't mean you don't need the, the administration, but the overemphasis, if the pastor doesn't pray, this will happen. No, 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 no. Jesus took care of it. And if you accept that as true, a, a lot of things will come around you. The last thing I want to say is that I was telling my wife yesterday, we're talking about someone, and I said that one thing I've seen is that Christians who are so devil conscious have a lot of spiritual attacks. And Christians who are Christ conscious have a lot of peaceful living. And she asked me why. I said, what you focus on becomes your reality. If you focus on the peace of Christ, if you focus on Jesus, there will be peace all around you. If everybody you see is a demon, the demon did this, the demon did this, you will always be engaged in turmoil. It's time for us to look to Jesus, make him the standard, make him the, as you focus on him, a lot of things will diminish and lose their essence. The more you look to Jesus, the further the devil will be away from you. But the more you look at the devil, the further Jesus will be away from you. And you'll be tired. <laughs> you'll be tired. You'll be doing fast things you shouldn't be doing. We fast to, we, the purpose of our fasting is not for the devil. Ah, <laughs> after Jesus has died, I'm, fight, I'm fasting for the devil. No, 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 it's not to fight the devil. It's to draw closer to the master. And once that is a reality, a lot of things come. Down. And that's why I'm happy with the topic we're doing. Because there are too many Christians who are too devil conscious. Mm. Too devil conscious. Mm. It's time to be so Jesus conscious. And the difference is like day and night. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. A comment from Elder Joshua said, truth, knowledge is the solution to this confusion about demons. Negotiating with demons is unscriptural. <laughs> and god bless you all thank you so much and that is our comment as many of us know uh we will leave this i don't know if you have any uh comment on this uh, okay thank you so much and also we are we do this every saturday 2 p.m eastern standard time here on the cop usa radio uh thank you so much for your fellowship and your time with us and many of us with more understanding with your acceptance of jesus christ he is also able to reveal more to you uh without further ado i'll yield the platform to our dear pastor to give us a closing remark and also to uh, lead uh, someone to the saving knowledge of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. I've enjoyed this discussion. As we said, next week we'll continue. We'll be ending on how to create a prophetic environment for yourself and uh, watching out for false prophet. Uh, but before we end, we can leave without letting you know Jesus is the, is the answer. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. Mm -hmm. Today, if you commit your life to Jesus, there will be a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. If you make Jesus the focus of your attention, the joy of your life will know no limit. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I really want to pray with you. Mm -hmm. Can you say with me, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart today. Forgive me my sins and make me your own. Mm -hmm. From today, I will live for you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. If you have said uh, this prayer, just know that here 
that we that are on the pulpit discussion, Pastor and myself, we are celebrating with you. Let us hear from you. You can find us on Facebook under the pulpit media. Um, send us a message, like the page, follow us. These videos will be uploaded uh, later on on those platforms. And you can go back, re-watch re it, share it with your loved ones, and let us all be in the north. For it says, for lack of knowledge, my people what perish amen so these things is preventing us from perishing in the hands of other spirits and and also the hands of other prophets so thank you all so much till we meet next saturday at 2 p.m eastern standard time bye-bye